Football is a violent sport, which is what makes evaluating players still in high school so difficult. With how prevalent injuries are at all levels, it's tough to predict who will actually make it to the NFL. That's what makes things like the USA Today All-USA High School football team so intriguing. These young men were among the best of the best, but many of them never found NFL greatness. Today we're taking a look back at the 1983 USA Today All-USA team and seeing what happened to all 24 players, starting with the offense. Ryan Knight as the USA Today High School Offensive Player of the Year winner, Knight would take his talents to USC where big things were expected of him. During his freshman season, he backed up Fred Crutcher and rushed for five touchdowns. Crutcher and Knight again split carries in his sophomore season, though Knight got a larger share of the load. Unfortunately, while he did score seven touchdowns, his rushing numbers continued to stagnate and Knight was passed on the depth chart. As a senior, he only toted the rock 35 times and went undrafted. His younger brother, Sammy, also played at USC and eventually made his way to the NFL as a safety, making one second team All-Pro squad. I'm not 100% sure if it's him, but there's a LinkedIn profile for someone named Ryan Knight who works for a hair loss solution company as of 2024. Vince Sutton Sutton played college ball at Alabama. As a freshman, he played in nine games and threw four touchdowns and nine interceptions. Mike Shula passed him on the depth chart the next season, so Sutton took a year off in 86. Unfortunately, when he came back in 87, he was still the backup. In total, Sutton played in 21 games, throwing 10 TDs and 13 INTs. Sutton would then go into coaching at the high school level, but would sadly pass away in 2018 after a long battle with kidney disease and two strokes. Craig Hayward Ironhead played running back at Pitt. During his first season, he posted solid numbers as a member of a platoon of backs. He'd then take a year off before coming back in 1986 and racking up over a thousand total yards and nine touchdowns. The next season, he became the team's bell cow back, toting the rock 357 times for 1,655 yards and 11 touchdowns, making the All-American team. He was then drafted 24th overall by the Saints in the 88 draft. Hayward moved to fullback and carved a 10-year career across five different teams. He made the Pro Bowl in 95 after rushing for over 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. It's also worth noting that that was the last time a fullback has rushed for over 1,000 yards in the NFL. Sadly, in 1998, it was discovered that he had bone cancer at the base of his skull and he was forced to retire. Unfortunately, in 2005, another tumor was discovered and Hayward would sadly pass away in 2006. His four sons all played some level of college athletics with Cameron and Connor currently playing in the NFL. Thurman Thomas Thomas left Texas to play at Oklahoma State where he would become a star. As a freshman, he was the team's leading rusher, but split time with senior Sean Jones. As a sophomore, the Thurminator took over, rushing 301 times for 1,553 yards and 15 touchdowns. While he lost a few games as a junior due to an ACL tear, he held off emerging star Barry Sanders to start every game during his senior season, rushing for 1,613 yards and 17 touchdowns while picking up his second All-American nod and second Big A Offensive Player of the Year award. He was selected 40th overall by the Bills in the 1988 NFL Draft. Thomas was solid as a rookie, but things started to take off in year two when he rushed for 1,244 yards. He would pass the 1,000 mark eight straight times after that, making five Pro Bowls, two All-Pro teams, and winning the MVP award in 1991. He helped lead the Bills to four straight Super Bowls, but Buffalo never got over the hump. He would eventually sign with the Dolphins in 2000, playing one more season before winding down his career. In 2007, Thomas was inducted into the Hall of Fame and nowadays seems to be working in business. Sean Stopperich First of all, apologies if the pronunciation is correct, I could not find anything official. Anyways, Stopperich was originally set to enroll at Pitt, but received a hefty offer to sign with SMU. He told investigators about the deal later, but nagging injuries from his high school days kept him from playing much in Dallas. Instead, he would leave in 1985 and try to sign back up with Pitt, but they did not offer him a scholarship, so he'd head to Temple. Unfortunately, he was involved in a car accident and his football career was over. Stopperich would stay in Pennsylvania, eventually becoming a part owner of a gym, but sadly passed away in 1995 due to a drug overdose. Andy Sinclair Sinclair went to Stanford to play guard under Jack Elway, but was converted to center during his sophomore season. He'd start at the position for the next three years, which would lead to him being drafted by the 49ers in the 10th round of the 1989 NFL Draft. He never played in the NFL, instead entering the business world after failing to make a roster. His son Tristan followed in his footsteps by playing linebacker at Stanford and making the All-Pac-12 honorable mention team in 2023. Carter Hill Hill went to Texas to play college football. He played center for the team from 1984 to 86 while also throwing discus for the university, but injuries would keep him from ever making it to the NFL. I haven't been able to find much information about what he did after wrapping up his football career, but he did sadly pass away in 2022. 
David Richards. While Richards was born on Staten Island, he became a national name playing high school ball in Dallas, Texas. He would eventually make his way to SMU after a standout prep campaign. He'd pick up all SWC honors, but when the death penalty came down on SMU, Richards transferred to UCLA for his senior season. In his lone season as a Bruin, he made the first team All-Pac-10 team and was subsequently drafted 98th overall by the Chargers in 1988. He'd carve out a nine-year NFL career as a journeyman lineman. After retiring following the 1996 season, Richards headed back to Dallas where he worked in commercial real estate as of 2009. David Williams. The 6'5 tackle dominated the Florida high school scene before becoming a Gator. Williams started every game of his four-year career, making the All-SEC team twice and All-American team once. He was then selected by the Oilers with the 23rd pick in the 1989 draft. He'd play there for seven seasons before finishing his career with the Jets. While never a Pro Bowl level player, Williams is remembered by Houston fans for missing a game to be at the birth of his first child. He'd retire after the 97 season and I have been unable to track down much information about his post-playing career. So if you have anything, please share it in the comments. Freddie Wagand. Freddie stayed in state to play for the Auburn Tigers. By modern standards, his collegiate receiving numbers weren't great, but it is important to keep in mind that Auburn didn't throw the ball much during his career, instead relying on its wideouts to block for rushers like Bo Jackson. Over four years, he accumulated 99 catches for 1,946 yards and nine touchdowns, while also returning one punt for a score in 87. He was selected 330th overall by the Bears in the 89 draft, but doesn't appear to have ever played in the NFL. I also haven't been able to find much information about his post-playing career, so again, share in the comments if you have any updates. Alex Higdon Higdon would join Ohio State in one of the most heralded classes in Buckeyes history. The tight end was joined by Chris Carter and two defensive players we'll get to below. He actually played both sides of the ball at Ohio State, spending time at linebacker in addition to tight end. By his senior season, Higdon was named the All-Big Ten team, though his career was cursed by several injuries. Thankfully, he was great in the classroom and considered going for the Rhodes Scholarship in 1988 before being drafted 56th overall by the Falcons after an impressive combine. He was solid during his first three games in Atlanta, but tore his ACL against the 49ers. During his rehab, he tore his ACL, MCL, and LCL, which eventually led to him retiring in 1990. Higdon would then enter the world of sports psychology and currently works with professional and college athletes. Eric Affolter as a 16-year-old, Affolter broke a national record with a 64-yard field goal. He would continue to kick through high school, but his true value was at wide receiver. It was at that position that USC would sign him to play. During his three years with the school, Affolter compiled 110 catches for 1,598 yards and 13 touchdowns, with his most notable catch coming in a 17-13 upset victory over Troy Aikman's fifth-ranked UCL Bruins in 1987. As a senior, he was named a first-team All-American and was drafted 110th overall by Washington in 1989. He was traded almost immediately to the Packers, but picked up an ankle injury during a pickup basketball game before the season. Affolter eventually made it onto the field in 1991, and caught seven passes over four games. He would then sign with the Chargers in 92, but was out of football for good in 95 after a knee injury. Since retiring, he's been working as a coach at the youth level. And now for the defense. Ron Stallworth. USA Today's Defensive Player of the Year went to Auburn for his collegiate career. Unfortunately, I've been unable to track down any stats from his time in college, but Stallworth played well enough to be drafted 89th overall by the Jets in the 89 draft. He played defensive end for the team for two years, starting 25 games and racking up three sacks. By 1990, he was out of the game, but he didn't rest there. Instead, Stallworth went and got his MBA and has been working as a financial advisor for Merrill Lynch for the last 30 years. Pete Kirkendall like many defensive players from this era, it's been tough to find stats for Kirk Kendall's career at Penn State, but he did make the All-American roster in 1987 as a linebacker. That year, he also helped the Nittany Lions win the title over the Miami Hurricanes. Kirk Kendall was then selected with the 289th pick in the 88 draft by the Bills, but was cut before the season. Eventually, he would get his degree in professional counseling and is working in that field as of 2024. Richard Pryor Pryor, no relation to the comedian, played all four years at Iowa. Unfortunately, several injuries, including a broken finger after a face mask on Purdue star Rod Woodson would keep him from ever attaining the heights many assumed he'd reach in high school. He never made an NFL roster, but was never too far from the game, coaching youth football for several years while working as a biomedic in Georgia. His son Isaiah played college football for Ohio State and Notre Dame before eventually signing with the Saints in 2022, but he was cut after a training camp injury. Tracy Rocker 
Rocker was the third member of this class who made his way to Auburn for college ball. There, he became one of the team's most decorated defensive linemen, making two All-American teams and winning the SEC Player of the Year, Outland Trophy, and Lombardi Trophy in 1988. When he left school, he had racked up 354 tackles, 21 sacks, and 48 tackles for loss. Despite that production, he wasn't selected until his 66th pick in the 89 draft. He wasn't supposed to start early on for Washington, but the retirement of Dave Butts and a knee injury to Marcus Koch forced him into a starting role only six games in his rookie season. He wasn't an instant star, but he showed flashes and did make an all-rookie roster. However, during year two, his game fell apart due to a lack of pass rushing moves and several mental lapses. He was then benched and released by the team before his third season. Sadly, he never played again in the NFL. Instead, he'd start his coaching career at the high school level while finishing his degree. He's since held positions on coaching staffs all over the country and currently works as a defensive line coach for the Titans. Matt Dingens. Again, apologies if I butchered that pronunciation. Notre Dame fans will have to help me out with this one. It looks like Dingens followed his older brother Greg to South Bend, though it's possible the Fighting Irish just had two defensive players named Dingens in the 80s. Anyways, from everything I could find, the younger Dingens played outside linebacker for the Irish, but didn't do much of note on the gridiron. It appears that he then jumped into the business world and has led a relatively normal life in the years since. Frank Stams When Stams went to Notre Dame, he started his career as a running back under coach Jerry Faust. However, when Lou Holtz took over, he switched to linebacker, which turned out to be a great decision. As a senior, Stams made the All-America team and helped the Fighting Irish win the 1988 national title. He was then selected 45th overall by the Rams in the 89 draft. While he never developed into a star, he did carve out a seven-year career across three teams. Stams retired in 1995 with 191 tackles, two sacks, and two interceptions. As of 2019, he was working in insurance while serving as a city councilman in an Akron, Ohio suburb. Cedric Figaro Figaro was yet another player who made his way to Notre Dame for college ball. He was named to the All-America team in 1986 and was drafted by the Chargers with the 152nd pick in the 88 draft. He spent three years in San Diego before signing with the Colts and then Browns. After the 92 season, Figaro played in the World League of American Football before returning to the NFL with the Rams in 95. He'd play two more seasons before finishing his career with one last season in the WALF. Since hanging him up, Figaro's been coaching, mostly at the high school level. Chris Spielman Spielman initially wanted to go to Michigan, but after his dad called him a traitor and told him to never come home if he became a Wolverine, he instead went to Ohio State. It worked out in his favor as he was a three-time All-American at linebacker and won the Lombardi Award in 1987. The Lions then made him the 29th pick in the 88 draft. He played for the team for eight seasons, making four Pro Bowls and three All-Pro teams. In 1994, he led the league in tackles with 195 and only once had below 100 tackles in a season. However, it's important to know that that was his final season in the league as he joined the Bills and had a neck injury that limited him to only eight games. He missed the 98 season to help his wife in her battle with cancer and another injury before the 99 season led to his retirement. He then went into broadcasting for several years, but in 2020, he joined the Lions executive staff as a special assistant of the owner and CEO, where he still works as of 2024. Brandy Wells. If you're keeping track at home, Wells is the fourth defensive player from this class who went to Notre Dame. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find much in the way of stats, but Wells was good enough to be drafted 226th overall by the Bengals in 1988 after running a 4.540 at the Combine. It doesn't look like he played pro ball, but he did spend 26 years as an entrepreneur before getting into financial management where he still works as of 2024. Charles Washington I have been unable to find much info on Chuck Washington. What I can tell you is that he played college ball at Arkansas and was named to the second team All-SWC squad in 1986. He would then enter the 87 draft but wasn't selected. However, he did make the Packers roster that year, played in three games, and grabbed one fumble recovery. After that, it looks like he left the game and I've been unable to uncover any information about his post playing career. Randy Thornton Thornton took his talents to Houston for college ball. There, he played defensive back and free safety for the Cougars. He went undrafted in 88, but did sign with the Broncos that season. It looks like he was on the practice squad during his time there, but he also converted a linebacker and bulked up. He'd spent a few more seasons playing in lower football leagues before retiring from the game in 93 and entering the world of professional wrestling. Big Swole would eventually make his way to WCW in 1999 as a member of Master P's No Limit Soldiers. However, he retired from the ring later that year, and he's since been working as an entrepreneur. Tom Tupa Tupa would join Spielman at Ohio State. While he made the USA team as a punter, he would also play quarterback for the Buckeyes, eventually earning the starting role in 1987 as a senior. That year, he tossed for 2,252 yards and 15 touchdowns while also making the All-America team as a punter. 
He was drafted 68th overall by the Cardinals in 88 and spent the 91 seasons as the team's primary quarterback after playing backup to start his career. Unfortunately, things didn't go great and he would leave to join the Colts in 92 as a backup QB. That was the last season he was regularly used as a quarterback and would transition to punting full-time afterwards. Tupa continued to play through 2005 with his best seasons coming in the late 90s as a member of the Patriots. There he made the Pro Bowl and All-Pro team once. He also won a Super Bowl in 2003 with the Bucks. After he retired in 2006, he moved back to Ohio and worked as the Recreation Director in Brecksville while also working as the Offensive Coordinator's alma mater. Tupa's three sons all played college football and his daughter played college volleyball. 